This is an advanced installation. It requires welding and fabrication skills. So if you're not comfortable welding, find a qualified welder or work with someone who is. Hey y'all, I'm David with Willamette Motor and Fabrication. I'm Steven from Offroad Design. This is the first in a series of instructional videos to tell you how to put together your front link coilover system from Offroad Design. The Offroad Design coilover conversion suspension completely replaces the original leaf spring setup in your square body Chevy. The system is based on a series of prefabricated brackets and carefully selected aftermarket components that, once installed, deliver outstanding ride quality and precise steering response over any terrain. Okay, before you dive into building and welding and cutting and taking apart all your stuff, first open up all the boxes that you got from Offroad Design, compare to your packing list, and make sure that you've got everything. Including instructions. They're available on our website. We'll send them to you if they're not packed or if you've taken this apart too long ago to have them. Make sure you have them. The paper is important. You're gonna have this and paper. Get out your tape measure and measure the distance from the bottom of your frame to the top of the axle tube. This is an important number we're gonna reference later. Yeah, one other thing to check while you're there is it's not a bad idea to maybe use a plumb bob or you know, square, whatever, but make a mark on your frame, measure out where your axle center line is front to back so that you know where, where that was. When you start cycling it, you'll generate a new location that's gonna work better because link arms move different. They move forward as they compress, where a leaf spring moves back as it compresses. So it's not gonna be an absolute number, but it's a good thing to have a reference for is this is where you started. Right, all these references go away as soon as you start taking this stuff apart. So capture them now, write it down on the instructions that you are inevitably referencing and getting greasy and dirty with your fingernails because you should be well familiar and make sure that you've got a record of it. Second is you need to get your truck in a position that it can live for the time of the installation. You're gonna support under the frame and you need to leave things somewhat open so that you can work under the front of the truck. A lift is nice, not necessary. We built a lot of things off of jack stands over the years. Right. I supported it off the off-road design front bumper. So that put the jacks way far out and that gave me a lot of room to test and cycle the suspension later on. Once you have everything safely supported, your next step is to really start taking things apart. We're not gonna go into a lot of detail, only because the assumption is that you know how to take apart the front of your truck. And so you're gonna pull the entire suspension, leaves, axles, and everything, and safely get that into your workspace. At this point, you can either get it on jack stands, or if you've got a workbench or a good fixture table, you know, working height is, is really ideal. Yeah, really all you have to be able to do is work on it. Yeah. Wanna be able to be comfortable. Yeah. This is not a place to go half-ass when you're welding your axle brackets on. So <laughs> needs to be needs to be good and out yep. of the wind. And now once you've got it up on jack stands or a table, basically you need to take the axle apart. Take apart the entire outers, ball joints, kingpins, all of that. Because you're gonna be doing some welding on this and you don't wanna smoke an inner axle seal, kill a ball joint. Yeah, smoking all the grease out of a ball joint or th things are gonna get hot and you just don't wanna kill them. You're yep. welding next to them. This is This is right in line with solve problems by trying to avoid making them. Right. Keep in mind that this is also a really good opportunity to do preventive maintenance on your front axle. Make sure you've got new hub seals, plenty of grease to go through your bearings. Just keep that stuff aside so that when you're done welding and your axle is ready for reassembly, you've got new parts and they're ready to go back together. Yeah, nobody likes to find out that their U-joints are bad the day that they're putting their coilover stuff back together. So it, it is good to think about that. You'll kind of automatically get an oil change as part of this. And even moving up the, the system, you're probably gonna be working on the front drive shaft. This is something that you'll need to pay attention to because there's a good chance you're gonna have more angle there. So if you have a Dana 60, here are some of the parts you might consider as preventive maintenance, but also what a great time to capture some upgrades. That's right, if you have a GM 10 bolt or a Dana 44, here's a list of your parts for that. And you will have also at this point cut off all of the vestigial parts of your old leaf suspension, shock mounts and leaf pads, right? So it's a clean tube. So now you've got the axle prepped. 
get out now the brackets that you're gonna to use to attach the links to the axle and to the frame. This is really the core of the system, that you have five brackets that pretty much right out of the box give you very good suspension geometry. Yeah, that's right. You're gonna have axle brackets, just one pair. They do everything in one shot. It's coil over mount, link mounts, limit strap mounts, bump stop pad, it's all, all done, ready to mount. And then you've got the frame side brackets for the links, which obviously mounts the links to the frame. That's pretty straightforward. And the panhard bar mount to mount the frame side of the panhard bar. First, we're gonna focus on the axle brackets. If you have a Dana 60, the driver's side is gonna index sort of the axle, but really we're gonna start on the passenger side where things bolt in. Yeah, that's right. You wanna start on the, the diff side with all of these because the, they're built to go down to the spring pad and that's what sets the, the rotation on the housing and then you'll match the other side. Now, this is where there is one really important detail. There are casting variations that sometimes we're still learning about. We know there's multiple GM Dana 60s, for example, that everybody thinks they're the same, but you'll get in there and find out that the castings are a little different. We're built around one and that's really all we can fit. So there may be a little bit of grinding on the casting and or on the bracket to make everything line up and give you good gaps for your welding process. And that's normal. There's room to do it and it doesn't hurt anything to do it. Right. Just make them fit. I had to do just a very little bit of clearancing to get these axles to, uh, to get these brackets to fit the axle. And pretty much they just jigged themselves to it. You bolt that part down. If it's a Dana 44 or a GM 10 bolt, you put the U-bolt in, that holds the bracket to the axle. If it's a Dana 60, it bolts into the spring pocket where the bolts go. Then you are gonna look for the other side that almost also jigs to the axle itself. You wanna make sure it's on there and set at the same angle. So an angle finder, a digital level, a big piece of square stock, like yeah. Stephen said. Clamp something big on it, yep. that does the job fine. The important thing is that they're the same. What I'll say is really the most important tool that you have to do this part of the process is time and your patience. Do take your time to get these things set up right, tack first, measure, measure several times before committing to the weld. Yeah, like everything else, welding I feel like is a lot like painting. Hmm. The, the easy part is actually laying a bead. It's like you paint something, the easy part of the process is actually spraying paint. The work is all done ahead of that. And that's to your point, make sure you do the work right and the bead will lay in and no problem and you'll have a good part. Now, about the material that you're welding to, the brackets that come from Steven are plate steel. The axle has three different kinds of material in them. One is wrought steel on the tube. That's pretty much just like the plate steel. Then you've got the cast steel knuckles. That's 99% the same. Or steel forgings. Or steel forgings. Right. Either way, they're steel. Okay. That's the big important point. The end forgings are steel and they'll weld just like regular steel, no problem. You can't really tell the difference when you're laying down a weld between the end and the tube. Now the differential is a whole different animal. That is cast iron, and it is actually our recommendation that if you want to weld it, that's okay, uh, but you actually don't necessarily have to. The two bolts that hold that bracket on are sufficient for the kit. Yeah, that's right, on our vehicles, it, if I was doing this for myself, I would preheat, weld, post heat, peen it, go through all the processes, but we've purposely left the brackets on our trucks, welded only to the steel components and bolted in, essentially just to prove that it works and that it's, it's all okay. I actually went ahead and welded a lot of mine. I did a combination of MIG and TIG welding, but you can use whatever process is most comfortable to you. So you've got the axle either set up or tacked, but ready to go nonetheless. Next up are the three brackets that weld onto your frame. Yep, so the first step is figuring out placement for the link arm bracket. And this is where there's some freedom with our system. The biggest thing is you really want the link arms to be as flat as possible. That's the, the overriding big concern here. That's what makes your truck handle the best is when the arms are as flat as possible and we have a range of brackets available. We'll work with you initially to get you the right brackets 
and then you've got some choices on the frame side. Typically, you'll start lining the brackets up right behind the body mount. You can work in where you go around your transfer case mount. Generally, a guy that's really concerned about handling at higher speeds, going fast, uh, kind of desert type use typically, go ahead and push the link arms back. Ground clearance isn't a concern. Some length will keep the, the angles more gentle for longer travel. Uh, shorter travel setups, the arms don't move as far. The bracket can go a little bit farther forward. And something else that factors in, a rock crawling type vehicle, something where you're gonna impact that link arm, the longer the link arm is, the easier it is to bend. Mm -hmm. So keeping the link arms a little bit more, I guess what I'd call reasonable length there, is gonna keep them stronger and easier to not bend them. Mm -hmm. As an example, the, the convertible here, the link arms are about 36 inches and that length of the thing handles well at any speed. We drive it on the road. So you don't need four feet of link arm with the correct brackets and, and kind of set up around your ride height. Right, so for comparison, the link arms on this truck are about 34 and a half inches. So very, very similar. I put my link arm back behind the body mount and then just with enough room left to build a new cross member for my combination transfer case Magnum mount. You can come a little bit farther forward or you can push a little bit farther back from that but there's a range and you need to determine what kind of performance you want out of that and they can help guide you as to best place to put that bracket. And that's right, that it's not super touchy. Your inch and a half difference between these two vehicles, you're not gonna know that driving it. Right. So this is not a place to sweat quarters. You want them to be the same side to side, right. but pushing it back and forth, it's really a matter of convenience and making the things fit in the other components of the truck. Now, just a good rule of thumb, you have committed the axle brackets on the, uh, to the axle. You could weld those all the way through because there's only one orientation they go in. Yeah, they can't go anywhere else. Right, right, <laughs> we, they go one They're spot. set, might as well put them on. But for the frame side, there's so much adjustment in here, you may want to move them a little bit depending on, well, other packaging things you discover through the process. So do yourself a favor, just tack these in place for now with some good tacks, that, uh, but don't, don't commit the entire weld until a little bit later on. Yeah, we're gonna be, everything that we do from here on out, you tack weld, and then when everything's cycled and tested, and you know that it's gonna stay there, that's when you're gonna come back and final weld everything. So from here on out, it's heavy tack welds, and think about where you put them. If you put them somewhere that you can get to them with a the whiz wheel, then you can take them off and, and actually move them. If you tack them somewhere that you've gotta gnaw them off with a die grinder, you're not gonna to wanna to move them. That's a, really, that's a really good point, that's a really good point. I got lucky and tacked them exactly where I wanted them to start, and I put them in kind of the wrong spot, but I was okay, so. Right. Okay, your last bracket that you need to put on the, on the truck is your panherd bar. Now this is really, really important. When you had leaf springs, the leaf pack itself located the axle, gave you suspension uh, action, it did a lot of work. We're replacing all of those functions with a couple of link arms, and the panherd bar is a vital piece of that. Yeah, that's right, the panhard bar sees a lot of stress. So this is a place where extra bracing comes in, tying into the frame in, uh, with some extra gussets is fine. You'll see a lot of our, our systems are set up with an extra tube coming off of the, the engine cage to help brace up the end of that bracket. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing is when you're getting ready to put it on the truck, it really sits right behind your pitman arm. Yep. That's, that's where it goes. The, there's a stack up steering box, pitman arm, pan hard bracket goes right behind it. And that's really a, the only place it can go. The shock is gonna stack right behind that. And one thing you can do to check, we have the geometry pretty well sorted out with this, but after you get this all tacked in, and this will be a check you can do, once again, we're tack welding. Right. When the axle is linked up, you can actually measure and you may adjust that panhard bar a little bit depending on where your axle sits because you can tune so that your panhard bar exactly matches your drag link. So that's a measurement that we'll look at. Once again, to emphasize, just tack it and we'll come back to that. So get your steering box to where the pitman arm is straight backwards. You probably ordered a new one from them at this time. There's a little bit different heights, whether it's a drop or a level, but make sure you got that in place put a tie rod end in it. Give yourself about three eighths to a half inch clearance between the bracket and the tie rod end that the pitman arm bolts to. Yeah, the, you're pretty familiar with this. We can show you what happens when you don't make sure that this works out or you move it after the fact, but that's your clearance. That's where it just has to go. 
The last thing is, as this thing bolts together, you may have to clearance like the tie rod end bolt to clear your frame. Some people pocket the frame, but you can also just make these little adjustments as you go. Point is, it all fits pretty darn close. Just make sure that there's no interference. The pitman arm and steering arm don't move when they're working correctly. So that half inch clearance is more than sufficient to make sure that things are not gonna interfere. So now you've got these five brackets placed on your axle and the frame, and you are just about ready to bring that axle back into place and start building links. And that's what we're gonna talk about next time. Before you blow apart your truck and take it all apart and have no more reference for what you've been working on. Steven, just so you know, we're working off of your microphone. Oh. Start over. Okay. Okay. Sorry. No it was itchy. <laughs> <clears throat>